morning. On this third Sunday of Advent, with our days of preparation becoming fewer, our excitement begins to build. St. Paul himself encourages us to rejoice and to pray without ceasing. Strengthened in our hope in Emmanuel, let us open our hearts to the power of the Spirit working in and through us. Please stand. Lord Jesus, you came to gather all nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament this day to strengthen each of us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, you see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity. Enable us to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord, and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation, and wrap me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants, and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Cast everything. Retain what is good. And refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may, and may you entirely spirit soul and body be preserved blameless for the coming of our lord jesus christ the one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it the word of the lord thanks be to god But there is one among you whom you do not recognize. 
the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week when we opened our hearts and our ears to hear the Word of God, the first words were wonderfully attractive. Comfort, comfort. Give comfort to my people, save your God. And today, if we came with kind of the same mindset, listening to those first words, the few words, we find I find ourselves a little bit uh, stunned because over and over again today, we're hearing the word rejoice and joy. In the very opening prayer of the Mass, this is what I pray. Enable us to attain the joys of so great a salvation. And then you and I pray together the psalm response. My soul rejoices in my God. Rejoices. And then we listen to St. Paul say, rejoice. Rejoice always. Does the Word of God know that it's December 13, 2021? Is it rather challenging to find ourselves in a spirit to welcome the invitation to rejoice when everything seems to be opposed to that? If not everything, a lot of factors that can temper that joy that several of these children here in church already now about looking forward to Christmas. If we listen closely, we put together Isaiah and Paul and John, three giants of Advent every year. And they try to not only invite us to find a reason to have joy, but they tell us who the reason is. And that is Emmanuel, God with us. So here's Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to release prisoners, to respond to those who in any way are in need of God's love, liberty to captives. These people had been praying for centuries, not a few months, but centuries. Please, God, send us a Savior. And Isaiah, even a few hundred years before Christ would be born, begins to paint the path to kind of renew the hope and the promise that the Savior would come. Many thought it would be Isaiah. Some thought it was John the Baptist, as we heard. But here he is planting the seed of that hope again, that the reason for our rejoicing is in Jesus the one who the Spirit of the Lord God is upon. My soul rejoices in my God. My God is the joy of my soul. Several years ago, I received a, a gift of a statue of the Blessed Mother. It was all white, and just like some of you pick up your children and grandchildren like this, kind of hold them out, shake them and say you're beautiful. Well, that's the way the Blessed Mother was in this statue. And the title of the statue is The Cause of Our Joy. The Cause of Our Joy. The reason in the midst of any kind of challenges that we can find not a party kind of joy, putting our party hats on and getting this joy, but a deep-seated joy that gives focus and purpose to who we are and above all that gives hope, especially in the midst of any form of darkness personally or in our culture or world, whatever we're looking at. You and I know that when we try to sincerely follow the teaching of Jesus and develop our personal relationship with him and make him the center of our lives, the center of our lives, it doesn't always mean that that means easy living. 
no stress, no challenges. In fact, the opposite can happen. We can find Jesus stretching us far beyond what we think we can be stretched. And in so doing, still we find, eventually, patiently, wow, the Lord is real. He really does work in me and with me and through me. And in God is the joy of my soul. In some of the efforts that I've made to take Holy Communion to our shuttings, I was involved with one person this week that really kind of became some food and prayer for thought with his uh, readings this weekend. She's an elderly lady in her 90s, lives alone, small, modest house, and very much at peace and content. And when I walked in, the dining room table was just filled with a crash. And you can tell it must have been years of accumulated ornaments that went along with the crash. So I turned to go sit in the sitting room where she was, and there's another Christmas tree with another crash. The house was just speaking loudly of Christmas. And my God is the joy of my soul. She won't have many visitors. There'll probably be very little presents. But in God is the joy of her soul. Same with John the Baptist. I mean, you know, he is very clear today saying, I am not the one. I'm here to bear witness to the one. But even John had his moments. When he was in prison, he sent to the, his own friends and said, go ask that guy from Nazareth. Are you the one who is to come or do we look for another? And Jesus was typical in his answer. He didn't say yes or no. He said, you go back to prison and tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, and the poor have the good news preached to them. So you can imagine John in prison hearing that answer. And he's saying, yes, the prayer's finally been answered. He's the one. And God is the joy of my soul. John went on to be beheaded. God is the joy of my soul. So my brothers and sisters, certainly there is more than enough to stress us out these days. But as men and women of faith, we're here today, and God is trying to tell us that he's heard our prayer. He has responded. He is responding at this moment with the gift of Emmanuel. God with us. May we too find anew that God is the joy of our souls. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Be God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world.
Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the birth and the light of the world, let us lift up in prayer the people and places often facing darkness at this time. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may our words and deeds bring comfort to the poor, healing to the brokenhearted, and hope to the troubled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they work tirelessly for the cause of peace, justice, and freedom from all forms of oppression. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the retired men and women and religious, may our sacrificial gifts express our gratitude for their years of selfless service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those receiving Jesse Tree gifts, may they know that they are not forgotten by God or by us as their neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they experience the compassion of God through the hearts and hands of those dedicated to their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Keeper Benson, May they be welcomed into the joys of paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O loving God, in times of the many forms of darkness, you lead us with the light of your mercy and compassion. Hear our prayers that all creation may one day come to walk in that very same light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, 
We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with the host of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, so that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 